All right, guys, this is the muscle right here. All the bronze of this project. Um, right now, they're still kind of smiling. They're happy guys. But by the time we get that wall 24 feet, they may beat me up. <laughs> These guys are an awesome crew. They're absolutely kicking butt. Um, super excited to have them. This right here is our lead man. All these guys are great. So we're gonna work them to the bone, get them up in the air, stay really safe. And uh, maybe we can talk them all into going swimming when we're all done, so. <laughs> all right, guys, thank you. Thank you. Gracias, back to work. <laughs> it's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. They're starting to put some fillets in, our stairs, our landings into the hot tub and the swim platform. It's kind of funny on the computer, it looks small. It doesn't really look like a 25 foot wide pool by almost 50 long, but there it is. There's our deep hole for diving. Right, guys for the tail end of finishing up these window boxes the shape has got this outer edge right here is where the window pocket will be inside a concrete wall this inner edge is what you'll be able to see through to get to the window and this overlap is where the window meets the concrete and steps to the visual viewing point that's why the box kind of has a step you can get concrete window bucks that go in a form but they won't work for the type of window seal I need to make. I need no tapered edges um, so that I can get a really good seal on the window inside the pool. With no tapered edges means these boxes are gonna be hard to get out of the concrete. They're just temporary forms. We're gonna screw them to the side of a concrete form, screw the other concrete form to the other side of it, and then when we pour the concrete, it will wrap around this box entirely and then we'll use a, uh, a vibrating stinger that shakes the concrete and makes sure it gets really tight. Since there is no draft on this, it's coming out with a sledgehammer and there'll be nothing left of these boxes when we're done. So this is a one-time use. We have 12 of them to make to put 12 two foot by four foot windows inside the swimming pool. So you can see in and out of the pool also to kind of let daylight in to the 24 foot deep section of the pool so you can kind of light up the big black hole in the bottom. So we got a bunch more work to go. We got Armando and his help here. Armando has been helping us do construction projects for, for almost 30 years, <laughs> <laughs> literally almost 30 years. So uh, he's been around our family for a long time. So we got a lot more to do, enough talking. Let's get back to work. Those holes actually aren't needed, especially on this narrow of a window, but I've had bigger windows have problems when I'm putting mud under it. And if you have mud come in all, all from one side and you keep filling the mud down the wall, the mud will, concrete will slide across under the window. And if you can do that and fill it till it, the concrete starts coming up the other side, you won't get a little void under there. But sometimes when you're sitting on a tall wall and you got a big pump truck going and you got a lot of things happening at once, Sometimes people will put mud down one side of a window, then move to the other side of a window, and basically the mud will hit in the middle and create a little air pressure zone under the window, and you'll get this little pocket. And so I just wanna make sure, and usually the air gets out pretty easy, but when it's really wet and you got good tight forms, sometimes that air doesn't escape real well. So I went ahead and just put little holes, I'll put it in the top, and that way that mud as it squeezes together can get up to the bottom of the window. Probably, 
completely unnecessary, but it only takes a few seconds. So um, we got a few more to go. Let's get back to work. to get in and out of the bottom of my new pool. This is my 24 foot deep pool. So at this depth, the PSI generated is high enough that most people have to clear their ears three times to get to the bottom at this depth. So this would be good free dive training, the speed at which you can clear your ears, swim to the bottom and get back up. So I'm really excited about this pool. It's a lot more work. <laughs> you could ever imagine, but it's going really, really well. And I'm really excited, this gives you an idea of how big the moving floor has to be. This pool has a floor that will move up and down with the touch of a button to change the depth. We've come a long way, you guys know the drill. Let's get back to work. All right, guys, so some of the fun things about doing this pool and specifically to try and get windows in it, we had to do something unique. When you're doing a cylinder, it's one of the strongest structures you can build. So that adds a lot of advantages, actually simplified it. But what actually made it more difficult was putting elongated windows in it. Now, I could have gone a really easy way, which would have been put small windows. But what ended up happening is then it'd be hard to look in and I wanted the kids to be able to walk up from the outside and kind of look up and also look down 14 feet below them. And so I wanted long windows. What that does is it creates an area where the pool would want to billow outward. It sounds funny even with that much concrete to the side, but bow outward and then cause stress cracks right off the corners of the window. So the way you, we prevent that is we go to different size bar and then we actually make a bond beam structural member to each side of the window. So if you think about a pool design, if this is my pool, I put bars that go all the way around it. But those bars could bow outward and so could the concrete and crack. So where you get a lot more of the strength is you have your vertical members, but you go horizontal and the bars wrap the entire diameter. Now, as you go from bottom to top, you have to add more and more steel at the bottom, less and less at the top, just like building a skyscraper big beams at the bottom and they get smaller as you go up otherwise the skyscraper would get so heavy it would collapse on itself and you'll also just be wasting money so this is the rebar range that's inside the wall give you an idea this is what's in a traditional house eight inch thick wall uh, and it would be roughly 12 to 16 inch on center depending on the wall and where you live but that's a number four bar this pool has got a bunch of this in it and one size up from there and then everything in between, but to kind of give you an idea. Um, but one of the things we had to do, if you think about the rings going around the pool, down near the bottom, they're only a few inches apart. They're, they're really tight to handle the pressures and loads. The deeper the water is, the more pressure it wants to explode. So we have more bars becoming less and less and less as you work to the top. They're also double mat, which means there's two layers of bars in there. But then when you get to the window, everywhere there's a window, you're now making a break in the bar where it runs into the window and where it picks up on the other side, which could cause cracks out the corners of the window. Small windows would fix it. Elongated windows, we had to do something a lot more. So we built structural beams out of rebar that go vertical with big bar down the sides of the window and it's multiple bars in a wrapped ring all the way to the top on both sides of the window. And then this other bar that chases runs around the bottom, goes along the window and runs around the top. So essentially you have a giant beam on both sides of every window. So we had to build a big rack of them, full height, then crane them down and then wrap the bars, get to a window, go window to window. And now what we have is a giant structure that's going from a belly wrap through the window so that window cannot bow out. To give you an idea of how strong and how much rebar we put on each side of the window, the bond beam 
that's on each side of the window is the same call out for my rebar span over my garage that spans 20 feet across the top of my garage door that has a concrete lid that is also holding the pool deck, pavers, a patio, an entire roof, and cabana on top of it. And so that's how much rebar spanning 20 feet is what ended up going to span only four feet in a window. And we had to put them on two sides of every window and then belly wrap them on top and bottom to make sure it couldn't bow out. So one thing that's really easy to do when you're engineering an airplane, you're really concerned about weight and safety. So you always have a factor of margin you go above to make sure that it's gonna hold up and you can live through your test flight. On a house, it gets a little easier actually because I'm not worried about weight and where engineering says I could use a number six bar, it's easy to decide to go eight, one inch, whatever I want and not worry about weight. And since the majority of the cost is the labor to put the bar in, put the forms around it, the, everything else that goes with it, to just upsize the bar to be three, four hundred percent more than is needed is only another 10% cost. So it's an easy decision. I don't need to fly my swimming pool. So it is overbuilt. I have no concerns about these windows. There's no way we're gonna flex them. But just to be sure, we're gonna go ahead and install the windows at some point prior to even adding more structure on the inside with the pool coatings, plaster, uh, liner. All the real structure is this rebar cage we put around it. We're gonna fill it with water, let it sit without pool equipment or anything, and just double check, make sure the edges don't crack. To add one more level to make sure the edges are strong, not only do we have the beams, the belly wraps above and below, but we ran diagonal bars through all the corners to kind of grab that stress fracture point. So I think we're more than overkill, but it'll be fun to fill it up with water. Might be winter, jump in it ice cold, who knows, we'll see. But if we're ever gonna get this pool done, you guys know what we gotta do. <laughs> Let's get back to work. because today we are stripping the forms off the deep end of the swimming pool. So uh, the pour went really well. It's a bit scary when you do that tall of a pour because the pressure at the bottom gets insane. And we had a couple of pins starting to pop and bulge a teeny bit. We got a bunch more kickers on it, stopped it and finished the pour out. So I'm really happy we didn't have a big giant blowout, but the back is 27 feet tall. This big cutout in the front you see is where the pool goes 50 feet this way. Well, it's 50 feet total in length. So this is the shallow end of the pool that comes across this direction of the house. So deep end's done. We got a lot more to go. Today, we're gonna start pouring the rest of the foundation on this end, work our way this way. I'm standing in front of two sets of garages, 24, a 20 foot door here, 20 foot door here. And these actually, will drive under, this door will drive under the shallow end of the pool. So you'll actually see the pool above you. But anyway, I'm excited. We got a lot to do. You know the drill. Back to work.
Hey guys, thanks for following along. I'm gonna wrap this up right here. This is so exciting to have finally poured all in one giant pour. It went really, really well. Couple touch up items, no big deal. I'll get to those later. But also we have so much cool stuff going on. We have a giant deck that hangs off in midair, balancing on a basic two giant balance beams of concrete. I'll dive more into that later. There's a lot of crazy engineering, the moving platform floor. We're actually gonna go ahead and take it and make it come out of the water and turn into a dance floor so the pool can be combination of uses. So there's a lot more stuff going on. I hope you follow along. Love you guys, love engineering, love flying. This crazy house build, I hope you continue to follow along. We've got a lot more to come. You guys know the drill. That's worse.